All right, welcome back to Introduction to Machine Learning. This is Unit 6. I'm Sandeep Rangan at New York University. So up to now, we've been talking about linear regression with continuous value targets. These are targets that are real valued. Today, for the first time, we're going to switch over to talk about classification. And to do this, we're going to talk about really one of the most basic and fundamental techniques which is linear classification and more specifically logistic regression. If you are watching this video on YouTube, check out the link below to the GitHub repository. And in that you will find all the problems, assignments, demos, and other videos. Okay, so in today's unit, what we're going to do is going to talk about what is a classification problem and how to formulate it. We're going to look at how to visualize data for classification problems. We're going to then go into mathematically describing what we mean by a linear classific classifier. Um, and more specifically then on to logistic regression. We'll talk about the mathematics behind how you fit logistic models and then show how to fit them numerically using sklearn packages, talk about how to evaluate them in terms of accuracy, how to trade off different types of errors, and if we have time, I'm try to record a little bit on feature selection. Okay, to motivate linear classification, I want to start again with a very classic data set. In this case, this is the well-known breast cancer data set that you would also see probably in other machine learning classes. So when um, you are trying to treat breast cancer, what's very important is early diagnosis. What happens is if a woman has a suspicious lump, a doctor will do what's called a fine needle aspiration to remove a tiny sample from that lump. A cytopathologist will then stain the samples and visually inspect the cells. And so they would get something like this under their microscope. What they will do then is from this visual inspection, they'll determine if the sample is benign or malignant. Benign meaning there's no cancer or malignant meaning that there is possibly cancer. Now, what the cytopathologist does is that they've received a lot of expert training of the features to identify that are likely related to cancer. For example, the size and shape of the cells, the degree of what's called mitosis, the differentiation, and so on. But their diagnosis is not exact. So what they will do typically is if they're uncertain, they'll at that point go to a more comprehensive biopsy. But this can cause, uh, of course, additional cost and time, as well as stress to the patient while they're waiting for the results. The question then is whether machine learning can provide better rules for this diagnostic procedure. Now, the data in this data set comes from actually a very old study from 1994. Since then, there's been a lot of interest both in breast cancer diagnosis as well as more recently in machine learning techniques. This is by no means state of the art. This is 25 year old data and there are much better techniques about this for breast cancer diagnosis. But again, this is just a very simple data set that we'll use here for the purpose of teaching machine learning concepts. Um, in this data set, it's relatively small. There are about 569 samples and there are but 10 visual features. So instead of getting the image of the sample itself, the cytopathologist has already extracted key features and you can show see them here, like the radius, texture, and so on. And for each sample, the ground truth was determined by a more comprehensive biopsy and so we can use that as the target variable. The first publication that was done on this data set dates back to about uh, 1995. And I'll return to that at the very end of this lecture. Okay, 
as usual, I've prepared a simple demo to start looking at this data on the GitHub site. So you can download or clone the entire GitHub repository to your local machine and then run the demo there. But I'm just going to show it here using the Colab uh, site on Google. So as before, we just go to colab.research.google.com and then open and then you should get a dialog box like this. Select GitHub, put my GitHub page as usual, which is github.com slash sdrungan. After you do this, select the repository for this class, which is intro ML, and then scroll all the way down to unit six, and there you will see a demo for breast cancer. When you select that, the demo should load, and we here we have it, the breast cancer demo. First, as always, we'll just import some standard packages. It might ask you permission for the first command. Um, these are just NumPy, some plotting packages, as well as some SK Learn tools that we'll use. Now, the data is available on this UCI website that we used earlier. That's again, a great website for all sorts of data sets. You can use it for your project. So we just have to give it the URL. One odd thing about this particular data set is that it doesn't have the columns labeled. So I've just added those column labels manually. I've also removed, just to simplify the problem, I've removed some rows with missing data. And after you do this, we can see what the data looks like. So we have an ID for each sample. We obviously don't need it. And we have a number of features of the sample, like the thickness of the cells, the size of the, or shape of the cells, and so on. So these numbers are what the cytopathologist would have entered for each sample based on that visual inspection under the microscope. So you're not seeing, again, the image itself. Now the final column is the class of the sample and just by the weird convention in this data set, two is a benign sample and four is a malignant sample. Okay, so now let's just try just to get a sense of the data to do a simple visualization. And that's what this code here does. Um, first, because remember the class is either two or four, the first part just converts it to 0 and 1. And then there's some plotting, which creates the following kind of useful graph. Just for illustration, I've taken two of the 10 features, the size or the uniformity in the size and what's called the margin. What these features are physically doesn't really matter. And then for each data sample, I've placed the, each data sample will have two, these two values and I placed the, a dot corresponding to the values for that sample. So for example, this sample had a size of one and a margin of 10. And they've also placed a color for the sample, um, with, which is green if it's benign and red if it is malignant. All right, and then if we place these, do this for all the samples, we get a graph like this. We can see here that the malignant samples are tend to be in the upper right. But this graph is not very good. And the reason is that for this particular data set, a lot of the samples have the same exact values. And so multiple points get placed into the same dot. And so we can't really get an idea of the number of points that are in this green square here, for example. There could be a lot of red points below it, for example. So to do this, I had to modify this code and I wrote this function to do this, which I'm not going to go through. It's just a bunch of plotting gymnastics, if you like. But I just want to show you the result of this. So this is the same plot as before. There are two features, the uniformity in the size and the margin. And there are two colors in each point, for example, here with one, the size of the circle representing the number of samples in that point. So if, for example, if 
we take a look at this um, point here, this means that there were a large number of benign samples. That's why a large green circle. But there was a tiny bit, maybe a couple of malignant samples, and that's why there's also a little red dot. Over here, there's a kind of medium-sized red dot, which means that there are a few malignant samples, but there are no benign samples. If you got data like this, the classification problem would be really to build a function that would take these two features, or all 10 features if you had it available, the size and margin, and then make a decision, is that sample benign or malignant? It's a binary classification problem. Now, what we're going to cover in this unit are some techniques to learn these classification functions. But before we do that, I think it's useful if you just try to write one from your own. Even though we haven't covered any techniques, I think you'll have to get an idea of how to write such a function. So I want you to write a function in Python, maybe call it classify, and it will take these two arguments, say size, uniform, and margin, and then output whether that sample is, a, make it a guess, of whether the sample is benign or malignant. And then after you write that function, I want you to see how accurate you get on this data. So surprisingly, if you write it well, even though I've not taught you anything, you'll do a pretty good job.